The next step is you try to zone in by finding books through the library catalog. So in this case, my encyclopedia research showed me that I should be using intrinsic motivation as a search term. And then here I have books that contain the phrase intrinsic motivation. So it doesn't, let's do it by date. So I have the most recent on top. I know a lot of business students prefer to have recent stuff. Uh, so in this case, I have an ebook, exercise psychology. Okay, let's look at something that's interesting. There we go. The psychology of happiness, a good human life. Let's click on that. And I just wanted to mention here that we have this field called subject headings. Okay, and this is a good way to make sure that you're looking on the right word. That's another way of, of playing the word game. You could check encyclopedias and dictionaries, make sure you have the right words, or you could try any of, of your words, whatever words you know and, and you feel comfortable with, in clues, and then looking at the subject heading to make sure that uh, you're using the right word. And this is our way of playing the word game for you. In this case, there's. it looks like there's a chapter about intrinsic motivation, but the book is about happiness. Okay, so it may, be, it may not be what you have in mind in terms of, of, of using it for your, uh, for your paper. Becoming emotionally intelligent. Let's click on that. Emotional intelligence. Say, oh, wait a minute. Okay, intrinsic motivation is linked. And I have emotional intelligence as a topic. Maybe I want to I wanna dig deeper into that field. Okay, um, here's an example of, uh, of playing the word game with clues. If I say, for example, solar power, Right, I get a bunch of books, solar power, solar power this, solar power that, that's fine. When I click through, well, in this case, it's about photovoltaic power generation. That's a lot more precise than solar power. And if that's what you mean, you can, you're can you better off using those words than just solar power, because you got that in the title and here and there in the, in the, in the summary, okay? Another example would be here. Notice how the subject heading is solar energy, okay? So if I did my search on solar power, I got 243 hits. But if I redo the search, this time using solar energy, which is a, a good way to play the word. Anytime you're in a database and there's subject headings, keywords, index words, subject terms, descriptors, any one of those things, words, thesaurus words, any one of those, Look at them and make sure the, the search you have fits with that search strategy because all you need to do is go back in the keyword and change it from solar power to solar energy, which is what, what we use to describe this field, right? And then when you do this search, look at that, 732. So if you were using solar power, you were looking at a third of the books we had on that subject. Now, if that's too much, here's what you could do. You could put quotes around that and, and tell the system that those words need to be stuck together, right? And that brings it down to 484. And then what you could do is you can maybe go to the advanced search, which is from, uh, from this, you could say modify search. And then you could say, I want uh, anything published after 2005. Right? So you want to put limiters. I want anything in English that's available on the internet. Okay? And then you redo, and then you get 33. Of course, we may have more paper books than ebooks about the subject. It really depends on the subject and a bunch of different factors. Uh, but you may or may not, you know, find what you need this way. So you would go back to modify search and say, you know what? It doesn't matter. I'll take paper books and I'll carry them. That's fine. Then you get a little bit more. And you get the idea, right? Um, so, uh, so yeah, so that, that kind of stuff, the quest, energy security, we're making the modern world. That sounds kind of cool. Power resources, political aspects, right? Maybe that's what you're interested in. Anyways, you get the idea. So, so looking at these subjects and I'm not even looking at the book yet. I'm, I'm kind of getting a sense of what's in there, whether or not it fits with what I'm trying to say, but I, what I want to focus on is also making sure I use the right words for my search right, and redo my search. And searching is an iterative process, especially if you're digging around a topic, a subject, because it can have many facets, it could be, it could have many approaches, uh, people may, may look at it from different ways and, and things like that, okay? 
So encyclopedias help, uh, searching for books and clues and looking at the subject headings also help. Obviously getting the book and reading the book is a good thing to do. Um, some people may say, oh, I don't have time to read. This one's 804 pages. I don't have to, time to read all of that. Well, see here, if you, if you look, more and more we're including the table of contents of the book. Even sometimes you can get the more inside button here and actually take a look at the table of contents to see if there's anything good that you may want to use uh, for your paper. You get book reviews, different things to see if it's actually interesting for you to use. Uh, and then when you grab it, look at the table of contents, but also the back of book index to see if you can zone into different parts of the book that may be more relevant for what you're trying to do as a paper uh, so that you could focus your energies on the parts that are interesting for you. Be careful if you do that uh, because you can get hit on the nail or on the hand, uh, slapped on the hand, I should say, because sometimes authors provide one viewpoint, the counter viewpoint, and then they summarize with their position. Okay? That doesn't mean it's 100% true. It may be their opinion, it may be a counter opinion that they're discussing, but if you don't read the whole book or the whole chapter, you may, may be missing the subtlety of how they're approaching the subject. So be careful not quoting things out of context, okay? Just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Uh, but that's a good way to, to zone into the parts of the book that you want is the table of contents or the back of book index. And again, Take a look at the bibliography, particularly in the section of the book that you're using. Maybe the author of that book is quoting resources that you can also find either through Clues, the library catalog, to see if we have the books, or you could see if we subscribe to the e-journals. Okay, so if they're quoting an article from Harvard Business Review or The Economist or the Journal of Marketing or any kind of, of magazine, trade publication journal, check in e-journals to see if we subscribe to it. And you and most of the time it's it's the electronic journal. We have tons of electronic journals these days. So just check to see if we subscribe to the journal and then you can take a look at it. Okay?